letting go of Angel Gomez. So, um, on the football front, don't talk about much football on here because, you know, it can get a bit boring. But touching on it, because it's May United and I can talk about what I want. <clears throat> Angel Gomez, one of um, our recent academy graduates, somebody who kind of burst through the scenes in the reserves and uh, playing with the under-23s, it, it looks like he's going to be let go by Manchester United. Olegan Solskjaer gave a press conference the other day, essentially said he hasn't signed a new contract and the you know, the date for signing contracts is, I think it's going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, right? Um, everything has to be signed by Wednesday. If not, then uh, players that are out of contract will be allowed to leave and seek passes new. Now, Angel Gomez is an interesting case study because he's obviously a player. I'm going to put the video here in the background so you can see what people are talking about. This is a kind of a little skip from... I'll mute the sounds of no one so I don't get banned or anything. But Angel Gomez is an interesting one uh, just because, you know, I think he is... A player who might have suffered the most post-SAF, maybe, in that regard. Because he's so mediocre and because he's so tiny but good, <laughs> maybe there was a case for when Solskjaer came in, he had to kind of rely on players that he knew could kind of withstand, who were robust, right, that were able to maybe play, I don't know, three games in a week in the Premier League, European Cups, domestic Cups, whatever it may be. That might be part of it. Or it just simply might be the case that he's a young player who fought a lot of himself, wanting to negotiate a better contract, and um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the club management fought against it. But I'm also kind of... Uh, I'm also left thinking maybe he wouldn't have left if we had a director of football because it looks like we're never going to get one, right? I think Edward was sort of like essentially said that he's kind of put the blame, he's kind of laid the blame or kind of give the responsibility to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his sort of advisors and the people that he kind of has um, the ear of who are kind of advising him on transfers. But I think if we had a director of football who was able to orchestrate um, our approach to recruitment, our playing style, who's not playing style, our approach to recruitment, um, the kind of football we wanted to play going forward, the kind of player we were kind of profiling, I think we would probably have held um, Angel Gomez closer to our chest than, pre than what is basically happening at the moment. Because you look at someone like Angel Gomez, you think that profile of player who could essentially kind of re replace Mata in this sort of role, right? Um, who kind of come through the academy, doesn't really cost us much. You're going to have to spend a minimum of 50 million to replace that kind of player anyway, even if it's a Jack Grealish, whatever it may be, right? And you're having to risk the... Then there's a risk obviously included of like not knowing if that person is actually going to perform on your in your team, right? You look at someone like a Morgan Schleiden, right? A good, good example. Played for Southampton, played for... So I can't tell who else was with before. Somebody else before. I've got a team. But anyway, he spent a lot of time in the Premier League. He was very accustomed to the league, very accustomed to what we were about. Came to Man United and completely stunk up the place. So it goes to show that just because you've got Premier League experience doesn't mean you're going to be a success in a team. So I look at Angel Gomez and myself, I would have probably given him more of a chance to kind of prove his worth, especially when you think of the amount of chances T. Chong was given. You can argue and say, oh, but Hugh Chong signed his contract. It doesn't matter. I think if you have good players, talented players, you should play them, right? Regardless if they sign a contract or not. Even if you, even if you want to let them go, you should probably play them so that they can look good so that you can kind of put them in a the shop window, quote unquote, and they can, they can leave. We did the same thing with Alexis Sanchez, right? He was stinking up the place, but he kept on playing because we wanted to move him on. So I think the same could have been applied to Angel Gomez. And I don't think it's encouraging bad behavior either, because if I, I like what Oli Khan Solskjaer so, so, is doing. I like the fact that he's kind of holding firm with the contracts and, you know, he's kind of instilling this idea that uh, players need to play for the badge and need to be committed to the project, blah, 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 blah. But he also needs to kind of accept that we don't, we're not in that area anymore where people, apart from maybe Real Madrid or whatever it may be, there's not many players out there who really long for playing for a certain club these players are mostly in it for the money are mostly in it for the sporting accolades right achievements that like kind of want to collect trophies like Ibrahimovic has done in his career but they're not necessarily tied or tethered to a club they're not really and if, again unless it's like Real Madrid or Barcelona for the most part most players just want to play football get paid win trophies which is okay but I think this idea that we should expect every academy graduate to be you know Mark Hughes in you know in the in their loyalty or but yeah mark hughes yeah mark hughes in their loyalty and devotion to the club is really really short-sighted i think in that regard and i think again we've we just kind of it's one of those missteps that we always end up doing as my united as a club in general we always end up letting go of players who have a lot of potential like a you know a daily blind uh i can't use the other one uh a memphis the pie we end up letting go of those players sooner than we let go of actual certified crap, right? 
Phil Jones being a good example. He's how long has he been at our club? How long has he stunk up the place? How long has he basically proven he's not fit um, physically and mentally to play at this level? Right, he's still here. Andres Pereira has been given countless opportunities, but he f always flatters to deceive. Um, you know, Lingard has unfortunately for me as well because I'm a big fan of Lingard's, and it's been really um, heartbreaking to see how far he's fallen. But he's obviously not going to get any better anytime soon. There are players who have quite clearly been given a lot more chances than Gomez to impress or to keep their place and they haven't necessarily taken it. So I don't really see why we're being so cutthroat with a kid that's only 19. Um, that's the thing that really disturbs me in that regard. Like I would much rather prefer a little bit more patience there. But again, if there's no patience there, but then there's uh, an acceptance that we need to get to the top as soon as possible and we go out and sign a Grealish, we go out and sign a Sao Niguez or whatever, fair enough, right? I understand that, fair. But I want to see that intent going forward in the summer market. Again, we're not going to see it until the season's over. But something tells me that it's not going to work out the way we think it's going to work out. I think we'll end up signing one player and then that will be a lot. We'll end up having just to kind of hang hang on and deal with that. When you look at the second team that played against Norwich and you think to yourself, we need more than one player to kind of make us a title challenger again. But again, what do I know? Man? Maybe I don't know any different. Um, but yeah, wishing Angel Gomez all the success. Hopefully he goes on to prove us wrong. Um, I would actually like that for his career in general. I think it's good. It's not not even to stick one up uh, to Ollie. I just think it's good to see our players, even when they do leave, go and make a success of themselves and have a solid career. I looked at Ryan Tunnicliffe the other day. He's playing for, like, is it Burnley or Barnsley? One of them, right? And he's doing pretty well over there. It's nice to see those young players who have come through, didn't really cut it at our level, still be able to kind of support their family, live their dreams, playing, you know, at the top level. That's the dream, really, in the end of the day. It doesn't matter how far down you fall, quote unquote. As long as you're playing professional football, you've won. So, yeah, so um, big up Andrew Gomez. Hopefully, he goes on to doing some great things and you know we're able to kind of claim as one's our own in it because he did come through our